top eight waiting, including Roman Menager, rested from the starting 15. Referee is uh, Rose Labreche from Canada, two French officials supporting her on the touchline, and Kevin Beggs from the Ireland Rugby Football Union sitting in the warmth of the truck. So here we go. Round three for France and Italy kicks on. Italy looking to get a little more continuity perhaps into their game than they've been able to show. They showed so well in that first half against England and in large patches of the game against Dublin. But they haven't been able to get that continuity. Ndiaye, of course, in the second row now, having moved up from her almost traditional number eight berth. So much talent in that particular breakaway area for the French. Bourdon. Tasty box kick, catching out. Two experienced operators in Ferland and Baratine. And it's an advantage France from that kick. As you can see, a strong breeze behind the backs of the French in this first half. Sarah Baradine earning her 80th cap. Very experienced operator, of course. Just a lack of communication there between scrum half and fullback. Means we're going to get the first scrum put in to the French. Caroline Thomas with the blue and yellow scrum cap and loose head. Her return very much welcomed. Agathe Socha and Julie Duval, her colleagues in that front three trio. Solid start from the French forwards. Whisked out to Tremillier. Good tackle coming in from the Italian backs, but they're going to have to set their line fairly quickly. We've seen so much fluidity from this French attack already in this Six Nations. And you can see the speed with which they're moving the ball along. The pass from uh, Boudot to her loose head, not quite what she was looking for. Perilly, Thomas, the 26-year-old, making her Six Nations debut this evening. Was a bit of a bullet pass, wasn't it? <laughs> These two met back in November. In uh, Turin, and it was, uh, although it's a 41-21 final score to France for 65 minutes, Italy actually led 21-20 before four tries in the last 20 minutes changed the outcome. Straight out, reset. Well, the power play from the French forwards not bearing dividend on this occasion, but a real end of things to come perhaps the Italian pack without a lot of familiar names Eleanor Ritchie with a calf problem Lucia Guy with a left ankle that's out of the front row and then you've got the Valeria Fedrugi the Saracen second row had to have a hand operation after that England game Valentina Ruzzo as well, with an elbow injury from Dublin. So a lot of these youngsters finding out things the hard way. You can see by the uh, assistant referee's flag on that far side just how strong the breeze is. And uh, Beatrice Rigoni is going to have to be wary of her kicking style from hand, if nothing else, in this first half.
plenty of options for Sochat in the end it's a uh, captain down here man the drive come, comes on with the Montpellier hooker in the vanguard very little that the Italians can do to stop it now it's out draw out to Boudot out to Dremourier lovely little handling room but unfortunately the last inside pop to Cyril Banet unable to find the target Banet who scored in both of the previous two games just see the relentless power of the forward outfit for the French Trumelier, of course, missed the Rugby World Cup with that fractured pelvis, but pretty much a fixture in the 15 shirt. Again, the power comes on. Again, the ball is there for Bordeaux. Quick wrap round from Drew, and Drew on his back for France 15s. Has she got the try? I think Kevin Beggs is going to be brought into action here. Let's have a listen to the call. Fire no fire, please. I didn't see a clear grounding. Try or no try is the question. Drouin, the 21 year old fly off, actually made a debut in this corresponding fixture last year. Here's the roll. Sillary getting underneath the ball, and I don't think, in fact, I'm pretty sure that ball hasn't been grounded. Okay, right. Great work decision. from the Italian yes, outside centre. The ball was held up in goal, attacking yes. five metre scrum. So if we get away with that one for now, but the pressure is going to ramp up once again. popular decision with this home crowd at least pretty much neutral territory really is where right in the middle of the med but if I uh, did a backflip and got some big air behind me and swam for 56 miles I'd end up in Sardinia it's a good 110 miles to the French mainland so pretty much neutral as Bulldog breaks to the right hand side somebody's got to step in out it goes to him, a quick handling from Trimolier and his Bane. Try time, Cyril Bane once again. Three consecutive test matches for the number 11, playing on the right wing, which have taken a knock. The action of scoring and it was seemingly inevitable. With this French outfit so quick. Bourdon, who's impressed so much in the 10 shirt, showing that she's happy to play from that scrum half berth as well. Look at the handling, opening the door, even though Ferland came across quickly, there was no way that they could uh, shut the door on Banet. Going to be a difficult kick for, well, a difficult night, I suppose, for the kickers with this wind. Jesse Tremoulier started off with two out of seven in that Ireland game in Toulouse. Improved to three out of five up in uh, Scotstoun. Swing it to the left and let the breeze take it in. That is a cracking start from Jesse Tremoulier. What a kick from the fullback. What a start from France. France leading 7 balls nil inside the first 10 minutes. So Italy get inside the French half for the first time, I think, in this game. But it's going to come at them, back at them fairly fast. Ballet pulled down by Locatelli. 
The release into that back line is quick in the eye. Such a dangerous runner in loose play. Drouin. Beside, beside her. It's here, who makes the break, gets the offload in to Sosha. Again, France veering towards that Italian 22. Little offload is lovely to Lacat. Back row getting their hands on the ball, as is Julie Duval, the tight head. Sets it back. Once again, it's whisked away. Boudot. What a rock she's been in this French midfield. Draw up. Little show and go. Deft angles from the fly half. And again, the ball drops to the floor. But appreciation from the crowd of this French attacking thrust. And the positivity that they're playing their rugby with there is the new captain, Gail Emme. You can see forwards and back so happy with ball in hand. That's the work that uh, Samuel Chirouk and Olivier Lievremont, the two coaches, have been working on. Really from their inception back in, uh, well, just over a year ago, wasn't it? January 2017, only had a matter of six seven months to get France ready for the World Cup and how well they did one of the well, revelations I suppose in many ways lost out in the semi-final to England in Belfast but came back to take the bronze from the USA Baratine Dublin with that uh, Terrific score. I don't know whether you were with us at the uh, Queen's Elizabeth College, University College in Belfast, when uh, Italy and Spain could not be parted, moved into extra time in the ninth place playoff. And it was Baratine's try nine minutes into extra time. It gave the win to the Italian side. And that had lost to Spain, of course, in the group stages. Huge mark up. Franco, kicking his playing in Ireland, made a big impact off the bench. He's 21 years of age. Came on after 25 minutes when uh, Rutzer got injured. He really showed so well, both in defence and attack. And it's just the sort of fulcrum. Andrea Di Gianno Monico is looking for two and one, not fair, and parity. Well, what a surprise that is from the experienced scrum half. 31 years of age, been there, seen it, done it, got most of the tea, tea search as Sarah Baratine. The thermometer is showing seven degrees. Thankfully, the rains that have pounded the island over the last four or five days abated just after lunchtime. So the turf is looking good, should be relatively dry. Keeping the ball under control, Bulldog releasing. Oh, the move wasn't quite right from Banet. Variation on a theme from the right winger. Right winger, but wearing 11. Such is the French way. Just the sympathy of pass not quite working there from Drouin. of familiar names of course left the Italian ranks after Ireland in the summer and more so than uh, Veronica Skewball who's gone back to Japan I understand but, uh, Beatrice Rigoni has been really bred and groomed to take over 
There's the pivot in the Italian back line. Wearing 12, which he has done all season. In the 10 shirt a fair few times for Italy. That kick, though, not helping her side out as we see Caroline Bougeard for the first time. Polonisa, showing the physicality that we know she has. Emre, the Toulouse flanker, showing great work, great leg drive from the French captain. Again, France finding themselves in a striking position. Again, it's Banet, and again, it's dry time for Le Bleu. Well, finished off by the number 11, but it was the number 7 who made that. Gail Emre working so hard, so defiant. Getting the leg drive through the tackle. And in the end, it was a... Well, not an easy run-in for the winger, but the position had been set up by the skip. And the transference was good to make the gap on the outside. Good leg drive and finish from the winger. Despite the attentions of uh, Sofia Stefan. So the buzz ripples through the stands as the second try is in for the home team. So sense of deja vu for Tremoulier. Very similar position from that first successful kick. Oh, the breeze. Just, oh, it has done. I thought she drifted it past the left hand upright. But the assistant referees took a while to confirm, but what a fantastic kick from Tremoulier once again. Just watch this. It looked to hover and then looked like the wind had just died, but that is fantastic kicking from the tee from the French fullback. Duval. I'm sure in uh, Scotland she's got a fair old turn of pace, Julie Duval. Uh, difficult pass from Naomi to Thomas. So Italy have to draw breath now and try and use this geographical position to threaten the French defence really for the first time in the game. Coming towards the end of the first quarter. And it's been Italy on the back foot for pretty much the entirety. Franco to Baratine. Whisking it straight out. A very difficult pass for Maria Magatti. Magatti, who's two tries in 2015, denied France that grand slam. And Anik Hero knows the threat that could come wide from this Italian back three. Magatti, Stefano Furlan, quality operators, but need to be given the right sort of ball in the right sort of positions if they're to show what they're really about. Drouin changes the options with that big cross kick. Bane takes on the gallop, gets the offload in. Nissan takes them right up to the 22. We saw that option work so well for from Pauline Bourdon in that Scotland game. Italy happy to hoof the ball away from danger. Tremouliet. There's an Italian reception committee standing just beside her. Good work from the fullback, making sure that she held on long enough for her forwards to get around her. 
Bouchard. Bouchard goes around Locatelli. Bouchard forecasts what she's going to do. Full hand did really well there. Now, I've got a feeling that she touched the whitewash there, and therefore it's going to be a five metre scrum, I think. Let's have a listen. Lebrecht talking to Marianne Domenjo. Oh. A timing issue from Caroline Bougeard with the tackle coming through on Furlan. Let's just take a look at that. Uh, well, yeah. A thing of milliseconds. Rigoni not making much headway, but as I say, in this first half for Italy, it'll be a matter of just making sure they find their touch. Celine Ferrer, the buy on the second row, looking to try and decode this Italian line out. Ferlan in as first receiver. Baratine thought about the kick then, in the end, she had to feed out to Pilotti. Rigoni gets a kick away but doesn't find touch. And this is going to come back with Caroline Bouchard. And Yai feeds on to Le Cap. Last year's under 20 captain for France, getting that first start with Roman Manager. Being rested on the bench. Just a hint of a chance for Silari. But. Uh, well, the breakdown a mess, to say the least. In the end, France releasing M.A. again. Tackle from Franco, but this wave after wave of white shirts into the Italian faces is going to sap the energy. It's inevitable, especially when it's sapping in the eye. Such a powerful operator, 95 kilos. There's a second row partner, Ferrer. A little lighter. Drouin. France peeling round to that short side, Tremoulier. Boudon lets Colin Eason take over. The pass, I'm not sure whether it was uh, meant for Miles, but it got there. Unfortunately, Ferrer going off her feet. Baratine wants to get up the other end as quickly as possible. Outside the 22 and... Oh. Sorry, you can't go to the TMO for that one, Sarah. It's a matter of uh, just whether she stepped through. Well, Kevin Beggs is going to be brought into action. And it's going to be a French throw. And another opportunity. The game moving into the second quarter with that two-score advantage for the home side. But it snaffled by the visitors. Baratine with a better kick. Well, brought in by Bujar. Bujar hangs a very high one, taken well. The follow-up is terrific. Italy having to work overtime to secure that particular position. Haven't really been able to get any continuity into their game and there's another episode where effort just doesn't 
give them advantage. Good work from Julie Duval jackling over the ball. Oh, interesting call from the skip. Opting to take the three points. Arigetti. See that contest over the ball and look at Julie Duval's positioning. Her 11th Six Nations, can you believe? There she is, made her debut. A six and made her debut, well, plenty of time ago. 12 years ago against Italy. Tremoulier with the easiest of her kicks so far. The same result. And the scoreboard keeps ticking in favour of France. <laughs> Historically, it has been all about the French. Certainly at home, they've won all their last five home games against Italy in this tournament. Not conceded a single point in those games. Can you believe it? since 2010? So you can see what an uphill climb it's going to be for the ladies in blue. Maybe if they get a few more uh, unforced errors from Mademoiselle Boudot, who knows? Can they make something happen now? Giacomoli, Bettoni and Merlo in that Italian front row. Look at the power play coming on from the French pack again. Ball whisked out as quickly as possible to Bougeard. Lecat. Ndiaye keeping things going. Change again with that kick pass this time. It sets up well for Stefan. Stefan, one of the three. Stade Rene players in the Italian side. The Breton club having more representatives in the visitors' side than in the French ranks. Caroline Drouin and Jesse Tremoulier, of course, teammates of the likes of Bertoni, Arigetti, and Stefan. That's a monster hug from Safi Ndiaye. No way through there. He's having injury. Cyril Bane getting more attention. Doesn't look like it was the uh, same injury from scoring that first try. Let's have a look here. She tried to rip the ball. Rigoni coming through. Bane, of course, plays for Montpellier, the top eight champions. Reading the other day that the uh, top eight looking to maybe increase to a top 16. Fascinating stuff. Some of the articles on Scrum Queens, the oracle, the Bible of women's rugby. Keeping me up to speed with the domestic situation in France, and it is a fascinating season not least with Italians in it, but of course there's Scots in there amongst others as well. A real mix and blend of international rugby players now, playing their trade. In, well, I was going to say this country, not quite in this country, but you know what I mean. Awkward bounce of the ball for Tremoulier, but she fields it well as uh, Silari. Brings her down. Celery, of course, had time in England with Harlequins, or what was Aylesford Bulls, along with Ferland. They were uh, part of the double winning squad. Go, 
when you see the transference of the ball, not accurate that time, but the speed with which they're looking to get it out wide. Boujard. Bourdon. Into that midfield for Sochat. The forwards lining up. In the end, the deeper lie of Drouin forces the kick. Baratine. Looks to me like Bane has got an issue there. Holding that shoulder once again. Well, Rigoni not doing anything over the ball, but in the end, drew out, released it. Pelotti. Rigoni to Furlau. Giacomoli. Oh, the little break from Medea, the first time we've seen the fly off with ball in hand. Back into that 10 shirt, replacing Jess Busato. Missed out on the Ireland game, started the England one. Well, the kick not helping the Azzurri on that occasion. But at last we've seen a little bit of the Italian attack linked together. Good work from the 23-year-old fly-half. Just showing she is going to be a threat to those French fringe defenders. Oh. Could do with the ball. Please, can we have our ball back? There's one of the Menager twins. I won't tell you which one until I see her number. There's Julie Duval. Don't need to see her number. She is on a roll. Reminds me a bit of Rochelle Clark for England, of course, set that record yesterday. Tremoulier stretches out. Tremoulier goes for glory. And there's the third try before the half hour mark ticks up. It has been a very impressive opening salvo from Le Bleu playing as Le Blanc tonight. Just going to be a check up here. Tremoulier goes through there. Couldn't see anything wrong with that. Well, scored in that opening game in Toulouse. And back on the try scoring sheet. And there, it, as I uh, suspected, Cyril Bane has to leave. I suspect him, Marine Manager. Come on, I'm just looking to see if number 23, there she is. So, how does that adjust things in that French back line? Shouldn't take too much adjustment. She's a uh, very flexible is uh, Maureen Menager in terms of playing in the centres or playing on the wing. And the dose repeated from the boot of Tremoulier. Well, what an impressive start it's been. They haven't really put a foot wrong. Always difficult, of course, with the wind such as it is. And you've got to remember there is a strong wind playing from left to right as we're looking at it. But everything pretty much that the French have tried to pull off has resulted in points. Duval takes the handbrake off once again. Nissan been working with the sevens along with Drouin this season back for the first time 
for the 15s. A few of this French outfit, of course, on sevens duty with uh, San Francisco and the Rugby World Cup. Sevens Rugby World Cup, I should say. Only a matter of uh, five months away now. So think of the likes of Montserrat, Amadi, Chloe Powell there, all with the sevens. The Nate Corson as well, although she's injured at the moment. Grassinol. few uh, absentees that haven't been able to track down yet, the likes of uh, Caroline Ladagnus and Elodie Poublin haven't been part of the French setup, whether they're retired, resting or just not available at the moment. Yet to find out. Shannon Izar, of course, injured. Looks like that injury to Bane is going to be uh, an awkward one. Jad Lepesque, of course, out injured as well. What a start she had for France in that number 13 shirt. Talk about flexibility. Of course, she ended up, I think, ended up in a bronze medal match playing at scrum half, if memory serves me right. Anel Dese as well made the World Cup dream team. Was part of the autumn squad, but hasn't been seen in the Six Nations outfit. Pretty much a, a new breed, this French team, with the way that they're playing now, really fully developed. And the youngsters coming through. Tremounier out to Bougeard. Bourdon. Show and go from Mayons. Another one of the Sevens outfit. A pro Sevens player indeed, along with uh, Tremounier. And I think Drouin. With, uh, San Francisco beckoning, plenty of resources being put that way. Oh, you want impact? You've got impact from Marine Manager. Bonus point is good. 34 minutes on the clock, and the replacement winger, I think, has just nabbed their fourth try for the home side. Well, I just want to confirm whether or not she was in uh, the dead ball area first. Try or no try, please. I understand. Try or no try. We're just checking the grounding. And it's the right was foot that was the issue, but I think time. it's up in the air. Yes, it was. Don't think there will be any problems with that when they check back. You'll be pleased to know that Kevin Beggs can't hear me anyway. <clears throat> just checking, Rose. Yep. Okay. Okay, Rose, I have a decision. Okay, go ahead. You may award a try. Great, thank you. Tries are good. Bonus point in the bag before half time for the home side. Well worked score. Again, the ball presentation absolutely critical. The speed of pass opening the door for Marine Menager. Cutting just the right line. Almost running out of space, but job done. Five points is there. And there's another two on offer for uh, Mademoiselle Tremoulier. Supposedly the easiest of kicks, the right grin on her face. 16 points for the French number 15. And the scoreboard keeps ticking over in favour of France. Italy unable to break the bagel. How they could do with something just before half time to spur them on a bit. Beatrice Rigoni restarts, but it's going to come. Straight back at her and her teammates. Lovely line from Ndi. Straight back up to halfway. Go Le Bleu. Can hear me? Again, leading her team from the front. Neeson and Tremoulier working the ball through, but just not able to keep it in hand.
You wonder what it must have been like for Marine Menager when she saw her twin sister making the headlines in Ireland through that World Cup, made the dream team. Everybody was talking about her, although she, of course, got injured, I think, in the semi-final she missed, maybe one other game as well. But uh, as twin sister, she must have been mighty proud, no doubt. But wasn't part of that French outfit. Sibling rivalry, sibling love. Well, it's all in the mix, I guess, isn't it? Again, the Italian pack under huge pressure, but Franco does well to release. Oh, a big hit from Drew on Baratine. Rigoni steps in to organise things. Duca unable to make much headway and Italy being hemmed in, forcing the kick from the 22 to better kick, but it hasn't found touch. Menege weighing up the options. Look at the stride, look at the pace that she seemingly effortlessly picks up there. Tremoulier, well, we know what pace she's got. Bourdon. France just gathering around the ball, giving them so many options. Drua decides to go herself, sees the Italian defence trying to stretch out and cover. That's when the gaps will appear for the number 10. Ferrer, oh, the interception from Locatelli. Good work from Isabella Locatelli. Well, the university student had to have a wits about her there. Made the most of the opportunity to just relieve a bit of the pressure for her team. Again, Rigoni can't find the touch. And again, France are gonna come back straight into the Italian line. Tremoulier gets the offload in. Good handling work from the back rowers. That time my arms and air mate can't release the winger. In the Manuela Ferlan plays her rugby out of uh, Viorba now, her 64th cap for this Italian outfit. And her experience being tested to the full here in Corsica. It's been Wave after wave after wave. Right, referee Labresh, I think, is just talking to the TMO about a possible intentional knock on from Furlan. I can't hear the TMO myself, so I'm not sure what's being said. Confirming, conferring, I should say, with uh, assistant referee Domenio. Yep. Domenio. Just checking back, I think, on that play. Furlan did have one hand out there. Those two tackles look okay, but here okay, comes the fullback. I do have a there, knock on by yeah. Blue 50, but I want to check if there was a potential line break. Okay. Just let me check. Okay. Right. The call is for the intentional knock-on from the right hand of Ferlan, but the question mark is whether Neeson would have got away to the try line. And I suppose a potential penalty try. <laughs> Not sure whether you could count Giacomoli as uh, as cover there. Okay, sure, she should. She would. Here's the call. Yes, I agree. It is a deliberate knock-on by Blue 15, and there was a chance of a line break. Okay. Okay, so deliberate knock-on by Blue number 15 with potential chance of a line break. Um, so 
I'm seeking yellow card. Yes, I agree. Yellow card, blue 15. Blue 15, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, Captain? Captain Blue 15? Yeah, Manuela Fallan is going to see yellow. Oh, so there's a deliberate knockdown. Okay, from the line break. Well, Fallan gets a chance to get the kettle on early. Just a matter of uh, 40 plus seconds before the whistle should go, but things going from bad to worse for Italy. Penalty to France, and they're down a player. Of course, points difference could be critical in the outcome of this match, much as, of course, France and England meet in a fortnight's time. Manuela, you need your coat on. It's not that warm. So Shat hits a skipper, and the eye takes control. They select forward gear, Sosha with the ball. I don't think this is going to come out to the backs. This is dry time once again. Forward power pays dividends for France. And it's five foot for the French team. Sosha scored at Scottstoun. She scores here at the Stade Armand Césarie. It is one-way traffic in this first half. Well, there is absolutely nothing that Italy could do about that legally to stop that momentum. Sosha having a very easy ride at the back of that mall. Of course, succeeded uh, Gal Migno for both club and country. She plays her rugby for Montpellier. And uh, stepped straight up into this French outfit as their, I think, first choice number two. Certainly has been through the opening three games of the Six Nations. No problems for Tremoulier, no problems for France. Abane 1-2 inside the first quarter of an hour, set them off on the front foot, and they haven't taken their foot off the pedal ever since. Tremoulier, Menager and Socha making sure they've got a handful of tries to take into the hutches at the break. It's all going one way at the moment. France leading 38 points to nil.
So, welcome back to the Stade Armand Césaré here in Corsica. It was one-way traffic, certainly, in that first half for France, but now they're playing into the wind, and, of course, I suppose the memories of what happened in that first game in Toulouse when they scored those three first-half tries but then had to wait until five minutes from the end till uh, Judd Lepesk got the fourth. I'm Simon Ward. Delighted to have your company with me this evening to watch this one, wherever you are. It's certainly been entertaining rugby from France. Let's see whether the Italians can now find some sort of response. Giada Franco, the 21-year-old number eight, certainly could be the catalyst for a far more positive outlook, maybe. But there again, it's easy to say that when you don't have the ball. But unforced errors really not going to help. Don't forget, Italy's still a player down with um, Manuela Ferlan in the sin bin. The count up against her opposite number and making some serious headway. And Diai shrugs off one. Safi Undiai has got such power. Great ball handling skills as well. It has to be said. The uh, passing there not quite accurate enough from Miles. She resurrects things to go again. Options left and right for the home side. Quick ball not there this time, so they opt to try and drive around the fringe with the skipper, Hermé. And I again happy to be first receiver, this time getting the offload in, but the uh, ricochet's not quite working there. Interesting to see the work of Pauline Bourdon because for the first two matches, of course, she's been the fly half and played very well, very impressed with her general attacking play. But coming back in one spot, you wondered whether that would affect her vivacity almost with the way that she plays such effervescence, and it hasn't at all. And it's a very exciting prospect, therefore, for France with Bourdon and Drouin in tandem because they have so many options. Run off nine and ten, and indeed a running nine and ten. Well, there's a running eight, that's Giada Franco being shown towards the touchline. Stefan.
In fact, that was Medea having to do some hard yards there before Rigoni slams it clear. At least now she's got a little bit of added oomph behind those kicks with the wind now working in Italy's favour. Well, Duval's day is done. Julie Duval getting the uh, appreciation of the crowd as uh, Patricia Caracabaru, there she is, the Basque tight head, replacing the very popular Duval. Boudin, Drouin, Ndiaye in that midfield role this time. Tremoulier trying to tease the Italian defenders out of position. Neeson again showing that powerful running style that we've seen through the seventh circuit, the World Rugby Seven Series. Of course, two legs down from the uh, for the women, Dubai and Sydney. The attack just stalling as it was about to approach the Italian 22. Marjorie Mayons, Sevens Olympian, Sevens Pro, 15s stalwart as well. Such a, a range of skills being playing in the second row for part of this season, certainly in the Sevens such as her flexibility. There she is in the six shirt this evening. Uh, Giacomoli just taking a tumble and the ref immediately blowing up quickly to make sure there was no force going down on the Italian loose head. The Italians, of course, with so much missing from their second row. I mentioned Federighi, Ruzzo out, as is, of course, Flavia Severin, we've not seen anything of her in the Six Nations. Franco. Baratine. Oh, the passing again, not accurate enough. The pressure coming up from the defensive line may have uh, distracted Sillery. French defence, mentioning the Rugby World Cup, was the best defence in Ireland. Such was their uh, line speed. And Baratine will be well aware of that. As I mentioned, her 80th cap today. Now third behind uh, Michaela Tondinelli at 87. And, of course, Veronica Scubon, just two in front of her old scrum half. Blindside run from Bujard. Good late call, almost working. <laughs> yeah, the little look from Bourdon. Get the feeling that France are running through their game book now. Of course, two weeks' time, they're going to be up against their nemesis, the England side that has done so well in this year's Six Nations so far will be travelling to Grenoble for what would seem to be the deciding fixture in this competition. Again, Italy going backwards, but this time 
Well, Baratine rescued it, but no way, nowhere to manoeuvre down this near side channel. As Manuela Ferlan returns to the fray. Just having shipped that solitary try at the end of the first half from Solskjaer. Changes are plenty for France, though. Lys Aracast coming into the front row. There she is wearing 17. And uh, Audrey Fellani. Into the second row. You can just see, I think it's... Uh, yeah, Safi Ndiaye has made way. Oh, spot the ball. There it is. France setting up the driving wall, but it doesn't quite have the composition that they might have wanted there. Duca is like a limpet around that ball and I think has done enough to hold it up. Good work from the Italian second row. Time off. Quatro. Quatro. just telling uh, Elisa Pelotti her time is done. Miriam Pagani, there she is. Into the engine room. Oh, I beg your pardon, that's Bianca Coltellini now. A special moment for Coltellini on debut. The Hartbury girl, born in Milan, but plying her trade in England under Susie Appleby. And Lisa Burgess, of course. Not a bad two to learn under. Lisa Burgess, of course, was the uh, lady who instigated Maggie Alphonse's rugby career. Back in uh, North London in Barnet. So Coltellini should have some good shooters there. She is on the near side. Special moment for her. Dear Diary, today I made my debut, my bow for the Italian national side. Madia, lovely little offload, and now some good linking play. Rigoni takes the ball back. That's a big tackle coming in from Menage. Oh, just when Italy thought they'd found some forward gears, it's stunted by some defiant defence from the home side. Rigoni coming round on the wrap to try and release down that left flank. Fulham. There it was, we just wondered whether she was going to be able to work it back to Stefan, but look at the work at the breakdown. There's Menage. Half an hour to go, and still Italy no closer to getting something on the scoreboard. Lacat sets it back for a scrum half. Good reactions from uh, Ferrer. Drouin shows and then goes. Again, the presentation is good and quick, not allowing Italy to reset their defensive line, their defensive structure. <laughs> Crash ball Charlie is Agat Sosha. Again, Hermes yeah, showing good leg drive to get through the tackle, but on this occasion, unable to hold on to the pill. And uh, the moment is gone. Seems to be an inspired choice as skipper. Taking over from uh, Gael Mignot, of course. Still not a young lady, but the Toulouse back row are really 
has shown in her style of play and her personality what a leader she is. There's another Toulouse back row up, Fiona Lacat. Well, the rain seems to have held off, thankfully, at the moment. As Italy gets shunted back, again, Franco has to rescue operations. Madia to Rigoni. Rigoni gets the ball through, this time to Magatti. Madia spots an opportunity, gets the support from... Baratine, and now Italy beginning to get some cohesive attacking play together. First time really in this match that we've seen it. Can they get the consistency and the continuity to get themselves further up the park? Magatti walks into a cul-de-sac. That was awkward as uh, Aracast was trying to get away, but Baratine all right, we're going to see yellow here. I think it's Karaka Baru. The captain, cynical play, cynical play. She's not 10. Uh, I don't think it was for the captain. I think it was for the tight head. 10. Well, it's Aime who's walked off, but I'm pretty sure, yeah. It was Kar yeah, it was definitely Karaka Baru. And the officials don't seem to have spotted it. Emma has taken one for the team. But a uh, case of mistaken identity. And I think Kevin Beggs is just having, having a word. Or? New captain for white. OK, thank you. Time in. Well, play continues. And uh, a new challenge for France. Playing the player down and the player being their captain. Drive from Bittoni. Again, Franco happy to get down and dirty, using her big frame to really make a difference to the ball. It's an awkward take for Silari. The girl they know is Nemo. Don't ask me why. Madia, that little stab through, good cover from Bujar, but at last Italy get themselves up into the French 22, and at last you can see they believe they can get themselves on the scoreboard. Change for France, Marjorie Mayons going to be replaced by presumably Romain Manager. There she is. So we have Manager squared in this front side now. Now the referee realizes the mistaken identity. Here we go. Karika Baru. Just uh, lost in translation here. It was the number 18 who was yellow carded. There we go. She yeah. doesn't want to yeah. go, does she? So she needs to leave the Patricia field. Patricia Karakabaru is going to have to leave the field now, and presumably Gail Emma can return. Well, Karakabaru can be happy that part of her time has been done by a skipper. There we go. So whatever it is, seven and a bit minutes left. Play can resume. Batoni with this big opportunity for the Azuri. Taken by Locatelli. The ball sets up. 
immediately drops to the floor, but Batoni returns to the back. They've got to find the power now. It's getting a little bit fractured, but it's still there for France. Batoni tries to go again. Franco up on the shoulder, penalty call goes to the visitors. So, take two for the Azuri. Just got to hold that composure. Much as the adrenaline is surging through now, the prospect of this line-out and what's on offer at the end of it. These Italian girls have really got to make sure it's clinical. Take is there once again from Locatelli. It's sacked, but Franco still has the ball. Batoni waits for a little bit of help from her friends. The forwards know that they have to roll their sleeves up and do the job here. This is what it's about. Getting something on the board. Great work. From Hermé again. Look at the French tackles knocking back the ball carrier. Madia throws it, hopefully. Silari has to take it on the bounce, and immediately Italy is shunted back towards the 22, but they still have possession. Rigoni. Advantage call goes against the home side. Italy with two players out to the right and everybody else, well, now beginning to come round. Franco, who showed so well in that cameo against Ireland. Bittoni leading from the front. No way through for Stefan. Baratine to Medea. The cutting line from Magatti again. The scrum half has it. Italy trying to ramp up the pressure now on that white line. It's there for Nello. Both of the tries, of course, that Italy have scored in this Six Nations so far have been scored by forwards. Anybody seen the ball? Unplayable is the call. Going to be a French put in. All that half and puff, all that effort and energy goes for naught. And we're going to have to have a change, presumably. The sin bin replacement. It's uh, Fiona Lacar who's going to be taken off. And uh, presumably, we haven't seen the last of Julie Deval. There she is. See, as a prop, you can never warm down these days, can you? Never know when your game's done. I tell you, talking about that France-England game in a fortnight's time, the thought of a battle between Julie Duval and Rocky Clark is going to be absolutely captivating. To experienced campaigners, he says politically correct. Know all about the dark arts in that front row. Played against each other many a time before. Well, the French scrum doing the nuts and bolts, getting the call. And you can see Italian faces going, walking backwards, thinking we've missed an opportunity now with the hour mark ticked past. No points since the break. OK, 
Caroline Boujard was practicing her kicking before the match and getting good distance coming the other way, but always knew that kicking into the teeth of this fairly stiff breeze, I wouldn't call it a gale, but it is a, a fairly stiff breeze in the faces of France in this second 40. Changing the options for the kickers and indeed for the players. Well, I think Merlot has snaffled that one. Yeah, the tight head setting it back. Counter ruck coming in from France. Illegally so, says referee. Clearly, stay away. Rose Labrèche, who was named match official of the year in Canada for three successive years, there she is. Well-known face on the sevens circuit, and indeed ref the uh, Italy England game beginning of this Six Nations. Well, just as I said it was going to stay dry, il pleut. Well, at least it's not il neige. That was one of the forecasts earlier on this week. So it's going to make life even more uncomfortable for France because now it'll be driving into their faces. They may need some windscreen wipers to keep the focus on this game. Frustration from Franco. Plays a rugby out of uh, Rugby Colorno, but is certainly one of the young stars that can really step up for Italy in this tournament and the coming seasons. Italy, who really struggled in last year's Six Nations, went 0 from 5 to take the wooden spoon. Just one losing bonus point in the loss to Scotland. Only ran in seven tries through the entire five games. Need to find some of that confidence and form they found in 2015 when they ended third, having beat the Scots and, of course, beat France in that Home game I mentioned earlier, and as well as the Welsh. Great pickup from Tremoulier. Great dexterity. Marine Menager cuts on the scissors to take them up over halfway. Budo staying strong, and my goodness me, she has been a strength in the middle of that French midfield, both in attack and defence. Well, France trying to find their higher gears now. Haven't really seen it. Carl and Eason, another very physical centre. Romain Manager. Tremoulier straightens things up. That's the 22. Drouin as an Italian player down in back play, so they're down the player. You just see the inventiveness of the likes of Bourdon, Drouin, Tremoulier as well. The way they look at the different angles that are in prospect. Yellow cards done. As uh, Karika Baru has done her seven and a half minutes. Changes as well. Bringing Gabrielle Vernier still on. Off. Time still off. I want to leave the bottle. Thank you. Number 10 aussi. Number 10. Well, Caroline Drouin is going to be taken off. Looking to see that uh, Ladies, Italian player on the far side. Looks like it could be Franco. Can't see her. 
setting up in front of the posts. There's the experience of uh, Yano Ruvarlin in at scrum half. Change. Allows Bourdon to move out to blue. 10, and it is, it's Franco. Uh, Looks to be in a lot of discomfort. That, that is a really bad sign for Italy. One of the few shining lights that they've had over the last couple of games being carried off, receiving sympathetic applause from the big crowd on the far side, but that does not bode well. Still got to travel down to Cardiff, of course, to face Wales at the Principality. Sunday service there in two weeks' time, and then they finish in Italy against the Scots. Aramuzzo wears the 23 shirt. Who said it wasn't going to rain this evening? Again, that Italian pack is in reverse. This time they have some respite, courtesy of the whistle. Ball came out of the tunnel. We're just going to recess. Again, the eight girls shove, almost taking Italy off their own ball. Baratine looking for Furlan. I think she's going to have to go to Rigoni. There she is. Beatrice Rigoni once again cannot find the sanctity of the sideline. And it's going to come back through Caroline Bujar. Good tackle from Magatti. Forcing France to go from a little bit deeper for Lani. Boudon out to Vernier. Kakabaru on the charge. Twenty six minutes, still no points since that try from Sochak a minute before the end of the first half. Karakabaru with a hint of a sidestep. Taken on by Vernier once again. This time they open up a little bit further, but cutting back is Ferrer. Yana Rivalin, the PE teacher. Of course, many of these girls have different jobs, engineers, PE teachers, students, that mixes in to their rugby life. It's not the be-all and end-all to be a rugby player. Brings good perspective, I guess. Although, of course, some of the sevens now are uh, bordering on fully pro, if not fully pro completely to set themselves up for the Commonwealth Games uh, and, of course, the uh, San Francisco Rugby World Cup. Big dates on the Sevens calendar. There's one of them, Carlin Eason. Boudon throws it wide. Beautiful handling skills from Bougeard. And the offload is there as well. Tremoulier just managing to keep her feet in. 
Fulani. Tired Italian bodies and legs trying to cover all the gaps now. Change of options from Bordeaux. Brigoni up to it. It's hacked away by Medea. Well, right now, I'm not sure there's enough oxygen in Corsica for these Italian girls. They're having to work so, so hard. There's uh, Jess Posato on to replace Veronica Medea. Like for like, of course. Posato, who started at fly half in Dublin. And uh, Milena Saluk, the Polish hooker. Plays her rugby out of Lille Metropole. Not sure whether she's going to be up against Melissa Bittoni. Looks like Bittoni's taken uh, a heavy hit to that right hand already strapped. Twenty-six-year-old hooker also plays a tight head. I seem to remember in the World Cup against the USA, she played in the three shirt. Has that capacity to play across the front line. Time in. Been playing at Stade Rene for the last four years. Bit of work been done on Caroline Bouchard. Well, I mentioned that Toulouse game when France scored three tries in the first but could only manage one in the second. Well, we've had five tries in the first half of this and none in the second yet, so they've got ten minutes now to make a difference And from that point of view. Plenty of interest around the town through the course of these days leading up to it. Bernard Laporte has been in town as well, having a chat with him on the pitch ahead of this game. It's been a good weekend for Monsieur Laporte, the president of the FFR. Apart from the women's under-20s losing to the England under-20s, I think that was this evening in Lille, it's been a, a very successful weekend. The French women now looking to put a little bit of icing on this particular cake. River Island. Out to Karaka Baru. Happy to be in as first receiver. Such is the work of the modern prop. Oh, the break from Fulani. And Audrey Fulani is going to break the second half duck. What a popular try for the big second rower from Blagnac. Well, we've had to wait a half an hour in the second half to get a score on the board. And in the end, it was the replacement second rower who did it, cutting a great line, enough pace and power to finish things off. And that's try number six for the French. Was that forward is the call. That would be, from that angle, difficult to call. Hmm. A definite maybe. Uh, from that angle, it looks more likely that that did edge ahead of that line. Let's hear what the officials are going to make of this. Here we go. The last pass was forward. The, the last it was pass a, was forward. The okay. inside pass was forward, so it's a scrum to blue. Okay. okay oh, Audrey Fulani will be forlorn. Was no try. Out. Bet where you're standing now. Okay. 
Times in. No try. So some more big moments at Sylvia Tarani into the front row. But it looks, yeah, it looks like uh, Michaela Merlo being replaced means that Batoni will move across one. Durante and Dapache, the other two replacement hookers. Uh, uh, props, I should say. Not being used at the moment. Baratine takes the return pass from Magatti, but runs out of room very quickly. Feisty operator, Sara Baratine. Well, over 5,000 here to watch this convincing first half performance from France. Certainly, they are going to be contesting that top berth with England in a fortnight's time with a fair amount of confidence. Romain Manager breaks away. France look to add to that five try first half all Bourdon feeds a beautiful line to Vernier and takes it back and that is the try they were after River Island finally the passes stick the angles are correct the blue line is breached and France get their sixth try on the board It was a geometrical thing of beauty. Fulani in there as well to provide the final pass. Well, a very similar circumstance to Toulouse. The only difference, of course, they'd already had five tries in the bag tonight compared to the trio in Toulouse the pink city where Jesse Tremoulier and co started this Six Nations campaign they're continuing it in Corsica and the style continues and the points continue that's 20 points for Tremoulier now seven from seven So, a debut for Miriam Pagani. Big moment for, for the 25-year-old from Rugby Como. Six minutes for Italy to find some way of getting up to that white line and getting some points on the board. Looks like France have rediscovered the fire in their bellies now. Oh, passing not helping Fiona Lacat. <laughs> Captain of last year's France under 20s and one of the new young French rugby players that's really making a difference, says uh, Georgia Durante. 
late call up during the week for uh, the number of injuries that beset the Italian camp, particularly in the forwards. You can see Locatelli moving into that second row to allow Cotellini to pack down on this near side. Five minutes left. 45 nil. A pretty emphatic scoreline if ever there was one. Just a slip. Just a slip. We'll reset. Again, look at that French power. Again, it produces ball for the back line. And again, that back line just flows effortlessly towards the try line. It's Marine Menager with her second, France's seventh. And suddenly France able to turn the taps on. A thing of rugby beauty from the French scrum driving against the head to provide the possession flowing across that back line and in the end it was Menager with the handoff in Solari to open the door never to be stopped the half century is up for Le Bleu Well, the first kick that the French fullback has missed. Not bad, though. Seven from eight has already given her 20 points in the lockup. And on a difficult kicking night with this win, she really has shown what a class act she is with ball in hand and from the tee as well. Make sure they're behind. Well, Regan is accuracy not helping her team and understandably some very tired and dispirited Italian bodies there. Then you always knew that these opening two, three games were going to be difficult. You play against England, you play against Ireland in their own patch and against France. That's probably the three toughest challenges. They will have focused and highlighted on the next two games against Wales and Scotland. Though those teams have shown themselves that they've got plenty of out them given the opportunity. into the final 90 seconds of this match. The last knockings of what has been a very impressive first test match in Corsica. They've had rare old rugby entertainment from these two sets of players. Look at how she'd love to get on the board before she's finished. Shown great athleticism and desire. Solok. Staying strong on the ball, River Allen. Not finding a way through the heavy traffic inside. Here, yeah, mate. Well, she will just blast holes in the traffic if she needs to. That's what we've seen from her today. Fulani.
Boudon, Neeson, good hands. Bouchard resets to come back inside. Good, strong running from the winger. River Allen wants quick ball, she's got it. It's quick transference as well. Tremoulier walks into a blue reception committee that ain't going to yield on this occasion. But the ball is still there for France. Carica Baru. Bourdon doesn't like the options out wide, so she cuts back inside, does it herself. Pauline Bourdon gets her first try in this year's Six Nations. And France showing that they can slip into those top gears at a moment's notice. For half an hour in this second half, they just didn't have the opportunity, didn't have the possibility, I suppose, of really finding that attacking game as they faced into the wind. But now three tries in the last 10 minutes has really shown some terrific attacking class. Tremoulier adds the final two points. 22 points she's amassed in this game. It has been a pretty emphatic performance from the French. Eight tries in total. England, are you watching? Bring on Grenoble in a fortnight's time. The final score for these enthusiastic fans to 